Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about roots and rational exponents. I'm going to be using properties and terminology that I used in my previous video on integer exponents. So if you haven't seen that, please check it out. For some motivation, consider the following statements about taking particular numbers to different powers. For each statement on this list, we took a smaller number to a particular power and then got a bigger number in return. So the question is, can we reverse this kind of process? In other words, can I take a bigger number to a power and get a smaller number in return? We know we can write 2 as 2 to the first power, because taking anything to the power of 1 just gives you the same number in return. But I can be crafty here because I can change the way that 1 is written. For instance, I can actually write 1 as the number 2 over 2. So I haven't changed the value of anything, I'm just showing that you can write the number 2 in different ways regarding its exponents. I can manipulate this a little bit further because 2 to the 2 halves power is actually the same thing as 2 to the second power all raised to the 1 half power. This is because 2 over 2 factors into 2 times 1 half. So this is a legal move. And we already know what 2 to the second power is. It's equal to 4, so I can rewrite the expression as 2 to the 1 half power. Really all I've done here is shown that the number 2 can be written as 4 to the 1 half power. So it is possible to take a big number to a power such that you get a smaller number in return. So 4 to the 1 half power turns out to equal 2. In this example, I was considering 2 to the 2 halves power. Let's see what happens when I consider 2 to the 4 fourths power. Since 4 over 4 is still equal to 1, it's basically the same step I took upstairs, just slightly different. Proceeding in the same kind of way, I can rewrite this as 2 to the 4th raised to the 1 fourth power, and we know that 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. Therefore, I get that 2 is equal to 16 to the 1 fourths power. Kind of cool, right? Really, I've just shown that I have multiple ways of writing the number 2 in terms of bigger numbers raised to different powers. And I can perform the exact same things with the bottom three equations here, and you get similar results. The main takeaway from this slide is that since I can start with a small number, raise it to a power, and get a larger number, I can also take a larger number, raise it to a power, and get a smaller number. Let's look at the definition. Let a and b be real numbers. If there exists a positive integer n such that a to the n equals b, we say that a is the nth root of b. And we can also write that a is equal to b to the 1 over n. So the first statement is saying that I can take a to the nth power and get b in return. And the second statement is saying that I can take b to the 1 over nth power and get a in return. So a and b have this special relationship that depends on this number n. General definitions can seem kind of weird at first, but we just saw this in the previous slide. So we know that 2 to the 4th is equal to 16, and now we have some terminology. We can say that 2 is the 4th root of 16. We also have the reverse of the statement when we saw that 2 is equal to 16 to the 4th power. All the examples on the previous slide show this definition in action. We already know that if a number is taken to an integer power, we call that power an integer exponent. However, when an exponent is a fraction, say m over n, where m and n are integers, we say that m over n is a rational exponent. So 1 over n would be a rational exponent, for example. We'll certainly go through some examples, but let's look at some properties of rational exponents. So let m and n be nonzero integers, and we get the following properties. These are basically the same kind of properties that you would see with integer exponents, which you can see on my previous video. The first says that if I am multiplying numbers with the same base and different exponents, then the exponents add in this way. So a to the 1 over n times a to the 1 over m equals a to the 1 over n plus 1 over m. Next, if you encounter a negative exponent, all you have to do is change this number's place in the fraction and drop the negative. So a to the negative 1 over n becomes 1 over a to the 1 over n. Similarly, if I have 1 over a to the negative 1 over n, I get a to the 1 over n. This next property is the one that we are using on slide 1. If I have a to the m over n, I can split up the fraction like so. Since the fraction m over n equals m times 1 over n, I can write a to the m over n as a to the 1 over n quantity raised to the mth power, or I can write a to the m quantity raised to the 1 over n power. Last, if I have the numbers a times b raised to the m over nth power, I can write that as a to the m over n times b to the m over n. This is because the quantity inside the parentheses is a product, which means I can place the power on each term a and b. 
Let's look at some examples. Consider 25 to the 1 half power all raised to the second power. Use the third property on the list above to rewrite the expression as 25 to the 2 over 2 power. And since 2 over 2 is equal 1, we just get the final answer of 25. Now consider 9 to the 1 fourth times 9 to the 1 fourth. Using the first property on the list above, we can write the expression as 9 to the 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. 1 fourth plus 1 fourth comes out to be 1 half, so we can rewrite the expression as 9 to the 1 half. Finally, we can say that 9 to the 1 half is equal to 3 because 3 squared is equal to 9. Here, we would say that 3 is the second root of 9, or how it's more commonly said, 3 is the square root of 9. Lastly, when considering 1 over 25 to the negative 1 half power, we can use the second property to rewrite the expression as 25 to the 1 half power, which equals to 5, because 5 squared is equal to 25, meaning that 5 is the square root of 25. It is true that fractional exponents can get a little annoying to write, so we will introduce this thing called radical notation. It's just another way of writing the same kinds of things. So let a be a non-negative real number, and let m and n be non-zero integers. Then we can write a to the 1 over n as this expression. This jagged symbol is called the radical, and the wing that happens on the left is where we place our n. So these are both the same expression, we just have two different ways of writing it. So just to be clear, the expression on the left-hand side is written in exponential notation, and the expression on the right-hand side is written in radical notation. We do have a special case. When looking at a to the 1 half equaling to radical 2 of a, we would actually write the radical sign without the 2. Anytime you don't see a 2 but you see a radical, it refers to the square root. Any other time, you're writing the actual number. So radical notation represents basically the same thing as exponential notation, but we're going to translate our properties with this new notation. The first being a to the m over n can be written as a to the m to the 1 nth power, which will then be written as radical n of a to the nth power. Next, if I have a times b underneath the same radical, I can split the radical on a and b separately. I can only do this because I have a product, a, b. I would not be able to do this if the expression was replaced with a plus or a minus b. If I was dealing with the fraction a over b underneath the same radical, I can split the radical on a and b separately as well, because it's division. Let's go through some examples. Write the following in exponential notation. Here, we're given something in radical notation, so let's translate to exponential. Pro tip, these are common test questions for a college algebra class, so definitely make sure you understand. I'll first take care of the radical 3 and write that in exponential notation, so I get a to the 6 raised to the 1 3rd power. Since I have a power to a power, I will multiply those exponents together to give me a to the 6 over 3, and this simplifies down to a to the 2nd. Now consider the square root of a to the third over the square root of a. Since we're taking the square root of both a to the third and a, we can bring a to the third and a inside the radical. a cubed divided by a is a squared, which you write underneath the radical, and then the square root of a squared turns out to be the absolute value of a. For our next set of examples, we'll be given something in exponential notation and are asked to write it in radical notation. So begin with the expression 1 half raised to the negative 1 third. The minus in the exponent will flip the fraction 1 over a upside down to give us the expression a to the 1 third. Converting this to radical notation gives us radical 3 of a, and we're done. For our next example, consider a times b squared all raised to the 2 fifths power. I have a 2 in the numerator of this rational exponent, so I will apply that power of 2 to the quantity a times b squared. Leaving the 1 fifth behind, I get an expression that looks like this. To finish off, I'll square the inside, which gives me a squared times b to the fourth, so the 1 fifth, and I translate the 1 fifth to radical notation like so, and we're done. In this last segment, we'll talk about something called rationalizing the denominator. Basically, this means that we want to clear all radicals outside of the denominator, so that the only numbers present are rational numbers. We'll start off with looking at 1 over the square root of 2. 
we ultimately want to change the form of this number without actually changing its value. And a way to change the form of a number is multiplying it by 1, because anything over itself is equal to 1. Therefore, the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 is equal to 1. All in all, 1 over the square root of 2 times square root of 2 over square root of 2 hasn't changed the actual value of the original number that we started with. And multiplying the denominator by the square root of 2 will rationalize, or rather, clear out all possible square roots. When we multiply the fractions, we see this happen. My numerator is now square root of 2, and my denominator is now the integer 2. I claim that if you put 1 over the square root of 2 and square root of 2 over 2 into a calculator, you'll get the same number. Again, all we've done is change the form without actually changing the value. Next, we'll try a harder example. Look at 2 over 1 plus the square root of 3. Now, we can't just multiply this quantity by square root of 3 over square root of 3 like we did above because I have a sum in the denominator. And we have to be a little bit more crafty on how to clear all radicals out of the denominator. The most commonly used trick is this thing called multiplying by the conjugate. My denominator, 1 plus the square root of 3, will produce this quantity 1 minus the square root of 3 over 1 minus the square root of 3. Notice that this entire quantity is still equal to 1 because I have a number divided by itself, and the only thing that's changed is the sign. I took the sum out of the denominator, I changed a plus to a minus, and then I constructed this fraction, 1 minus square root of 3 over 1 minus square root of 3. This is a trick that will always work. All that's left to do now is simplify. The numerator comes out to be 2 times the quantity 1 minus square root of 3. The denominator becomes 1 plus square root of 3 times 1 minus square root of 3. The 2 will distribute in the numerator, and in the denominator, we use the FOIL property. We end up with 2 minus 2 square roots of 3 over 1 minus 3, which simplifies to negative 2 minus 2 square roots of 3 over 2, which after the 2 cancels, we simply get negative 1 plus the square root of 3, and we're done. For our last example, we'll simplify square root of 11 minus square root of 6 over square root of 11 plus square root of 6 by rationalizing the denominator. Multiplying by the conjugate, we get root 11 minus root 6 over root 11 minus root 6. We're using a negative because in the denominator, the sign is positive, so we switch. Now when we multiply the fractions across, we see that the numerator comes out to be 11 minus 2 square root of 66 plus 36 over 11 minus 6. This of course simplifies down to 47 minus 2 root 66 over 5, and we're done. 